Good morning everyone. It is Friday the 22nd of March and it's like quarter past nine in the morning. I'm super excited because today I'm traveling to Canberra with my mum for the Australian Yarn Show. If you didn't know what the Australian Yarn Show is, it's actually the first time it's happening, so that's totally fair enough. It's basically a weekend full of all things yarn, fiber arts, community, and connection. So not only is it a market with some beautiful stores from some amazing Australian small fiber arts businesses, there's also gonna be workshops and a heaps of talks and panels, which brings me to why I'm going. I'm actually gonna be on three panels this weekend which I'm a little nervous about but very excited about. There's also going to be some networking opportunities as well as a community dinner tomorrow night. So heaps of things to be excited about and I'm going to be taking you along with me for the weekend. I'm going to do my best to vlog as much as possible so hopefully this will be a decent sized vlog and you'll get a pretty good look and insight into the weekend and everything that's going to take place. My travel fit of course is my Woolen Works merch. This Barbie is a Yarny. Sorry if I look so tired <laughs> it's like I'm not used to filming this early anyway I'm basically packed and ready to go so we're gonna leave for the airport soon and yeah I'm excited to our room. <laughs> My mum takes photos of the room. This is our view. Some nice foliage. <laughs> That's our bed. Got a couch. Got a TV. Can't complain. Okay, so update. I'm back at my room, but actually went out for a little bit with my mum's friend that she met on Contiki like 20 something years ago, <laughs> who happens to live in Canberra. So she was like, yeah, he'll take us out. So we went out for lunch with him. We went to this place. It's like the Kingston Foreshore, I think it's called, like on like the waterfront by the lake. It was really nice and did a little bit of walk around, but like we were in the sun, like when we were walking around the lake and oh my God, I just feel quite drained. So came back to the hotel and my mum's gone out, she wants to do more exploring, but I'm like, I need to rest before tonight because we've got a big networking event tonight. I'm the kind of person who needs to recharge my social batteries. Like I can't, even though I feel like my mum and her friend were talking most of the time, I still, I'm like, oh, like I need a, I need to decompress before I'm out and about going to be lots of socializing tonight and meeting lots of different business owners from different fiber arts businesses all around Australia. Very excited. I've already kind of met a few people here and there just around the hotel, which has been really cool. And I'm sure I'll meet many more tonight. So definitely need to chill out and I haven't watched this week's episode of Survive yet. So, you know, got to make time to catch up on that. And yeah, I'm probably not going to get a lot of time to myself for the next few days. I've been looking through the schedule and it's pretty packed, a lot of stuff on and a lot of time to myself. So I'm gonna just chill out. I did a little bit of a, a fit change. It's actually quite nice and warm today. So took off the Barbie jumper and changed into my Josephine vest. I might wear this tonight because I feel like it's, it's classy, but yeah, everything is happening at this hotel. Like I'm genuinely from now on, I don't think I'm really gonna leave the hotel unless like it's to go get food like for lunch and stuff. But other than that, my dinners tonight and tomorrow are both at the hotel. All the talks, everything's happening at the hotel. So I'm not gonna be leaving here very much. So I'm glad we got out for a little bit today. But yeah, that's all for now. I'll get some footage at the event. It's really just a dinner, so it's not gonna be like that <laughs> much to show. But yeah, I'll get a few clips if I can. And then I'll check back in with you tonight after the dinner so I can let you know how it went. Um, and then I've got 
five beings that I'll, I want to challenge you to become if you have oh, okay good morning I would not normally be filming before I've even had a shower but I just wanted to quickly film this clip because last night after the dinner it ended up being super late night I probably only got back to the hotel room around 11 o'clock and I was so tired and my mom and I just basically got ready and went straight to bed so didn't get a chance to film this and let you know my thoughts on the night but it was such a great great night I did get a little bit of footage definitely not enough to really encapsulate what the night was like but I was honestly just like deep in conversation and didn't really get the chance to pull the camera out so much but yeah met so many lovely people some people who are you know had already connected with over social media different like yarn store owners from around Australia who have already been in contact with in terms of my book and stuff and other designers other indie dyers people who had I'd never met never even knew about found their Instagrams obviously it was just a really really great night to just like connect with people we heard from Prue Raymond from Dear Prue who is so inspiring I've recently become aware of who she is I'm kind of ashamed that I didn't know who she was earlier but I've been seeing her everywhere recently she's a teacher and you know she runs a knitting workshop she's a pattern designer she's a writer it's she's just so inspiring and she did a talk on kind of her journey and her entrepreneurial journey and how she's grown her business in the last couple of years it was really interactive which i love so yeah i really really enjoyed that that was very very insightful and a great kind of tone to set to start the weekend and i also got to you know chat with her often she's lovely so yeah i just i had a very very good night i was obviously a little bit nervous because Sometimes, you know, these kind of events can be a little bit intimidating for me. I was definitely the youngest person there. That was not even a question. I mean, unless I'm just, I didn't get to talk to everyone and I'm assuming people's ages, but from what I could gather, I think I was the youngest person there, which isn't surprising, but I thought maybe there'd be a few more people around like close to my age demographic or like at least in their twenties, but I didn't really get that vibe. So yeah, I don't know if that will change in terms of like the attendees of the actual show, but in terms of like the, the people who had the industry event last night, so like the store holder, speakers, etc. Yeah, I think I am the youngest. So it's it's scary and intimidating when you're talking to people who are sometimes, you know, 20 plus years older than you, a uh, lot more life experience, a lot more business experience, a lot more experience in this industry in a lot of cases. Uh, and I just sometimes I'm like, ah, what do I know? But no, I felt like I held my own in most of the conversations <laughs> at least. And hopefully that kind of gives me the confidence to feel, you know, confident <laughs> i guess in my sorry it is early i've just woken up in my talks uh throughout the weekend and that you know i'll be taken seriously i just need to act professional <laughs> and hopefully i'll be treated as such it's early i'm about to just kind of get ready for the day i just have one panel today so the whole morning is going to be quite busy there's like quite a few different talks i want to go to and I'm adjudicating the speed knitting competition. And then I have my panel. And then after that, I think things are gonna slow down a little bit for me at least, because I'm not going to any workshops. So I'll hopefully have some more time to check out the markets, all the different stores around then, and probably just chill for a bit. And then tonight we have a community dinner. So yeah, I'll probably check back in with you later on when I'm taking a bit of a break. But yeah, I'm gonna try and get as much footage as I can. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a good day. Hey, check. What are you wearing? I'm wearing your <laughs> cable... Orla cardigan. Pardon? The Orla cardigan. The Orla cardigan. <laughs> and my pants. So my mum's dressed as myself today. <laughs> and I'm wearing my new cast it off unblocked Lily cardigan. Woolen Works. DK Suri. High Barbie. <laughs> white jeans. Burks. I think that's it. That's all. Excited? Very excited. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs>
I really think that's my fault. The first row is always the hardest, and then after that, it's smooth sailing. First row is always the hardest. Yeah. I actually use a. You've got this. I'm very impressed that we have a speed meeting competition with three English speakers. Representing. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. can we foster that better in an online world? I'm a great one for connection, because um, I'm really shy. And, but my experience is I travel to Adelaide to work on the train five days a week. And you sit in the carriage with everybody else looking at a mobile phone. I'm sitting there knitting every day on the train. And now we have this little group that gets up one stop before Adelaide and we get up and we say good morning to each other, we tell a story, what we did over the weekend. struggle to knit the deadline, maybe you can knit the body of the piece, then weigh it, knit one sleeve, and then let me know how much it weighs, and then you don't need to stress about finishing the second sleeve by the, by the deadline, because I can do, you know, my like calculations from there. Um, or we can work to find a deadline that will suit you. Um, when there's that flexibility, I think, and just communication, open communication between the designer and the tester, I feel like it creates a much more enjoyable and, like, comforting space for them. I don't never want a tester to feel, you know, embarrassed, ashamed, or like they've let me down because they're doing me a favour at the end of the day. And um, yeah, it's really important to just like, from the start, kind of lay those expectations out, but also say, you know, I have flexibility and just be communicative and it'll be all good. And then something that I like to do is, because I run all my test notes through social media, like that's how I find my testers and then I'll make like an Instagram group chat and I just, it, I find it creates a very welcoming environment and a community feeling which is like exactly what this event is all about but yeah, it just makes the experience less individual where you're just sitting you know, at home living this thing for this person you've never met um, where you know, I'll always start my test mix with everyone introduce yourself, tell us a bit about yourself and then I've heard like so many stories of people you know, like, feel like they genuinely made connections through um, through my test mates and I've had testers come back again and again and again which I feel like is a good thing um, hopefully I'm doing something right yeah just treating your testers with respect um, not as though you're doing them a favour because I've, I've seen maybe some dark designers potentially with a larger following who kind of may and it's not I don't know what causes this it could just be a social media thing but where they might like to feel like it's a privilege to test for them and like they are the testers are doing you a favour <laughs> Working for free is, is not a privilege, it is a very lovely, wonderful, generous thing uh, that should be treated with respect and appreciation and not as like, you know, you're so lucky to be able to test for me. Like, I, just, I can't stand that. So I hate that attitude so much. Um, and yeah, and the testers may feel explored, maybe being explored in that way without even realizing it because they also are kind of proud of you. You're, you're doing them a favor, they would not be in there without you. Yeah. 
hey again. You may have noticed I had an outfit change. I had a bit of a tragedy that went on with my cardigan. Turns out, I really have no idea how it even happened, but some stitches on the back shoulder, like just but underneath the seam, randomly just started <laughs> unraveling. And at first I was like, no, it's a lace stitch, it's fine. But then I like looked at it like close up. I came back to the room to look at it. And lo and behold, uh, it was unraveling and I don't have the yarn with me and just was not a good, not a good situation. So I was like, you know, what, I'm going to change. I was kind of sweating a little bit anyway. So ended up changing into my zesty vest, which I love. So not an issue. And yeah, went on with the day. So I didn't really get to film that little update. So you notice there was an outfit change. That was why. But yeah, also don't mind my mum. You're in the video, you know that. <laughs> my mum's just on the bed. Um, we're actually about to go to the... Where are you going? Oh, you want to come in? <laughs> we're about to go to the community dinner tonight. But thought we'd quickly do a quick recap of the day before we do that. We've just been relaxing for, I don't know, a few hours. <laughs> um, decompressing, because it's very, it's very tiring. <laughs> Shopping for yarn and talking about yarn and thinking about yarn. It's all very tiring. So uh, anyway, we just had to have some downtime and now we are getting ready to go and talk about yarn some more. But yeah, what was your favorite part of my the day My favorite so far? part was for sure the speed knitting competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my poor mother, I bullied her into doing the speed knitting competition because there was like one person that wanted to do it and then another person volunteered, but I still thought that was a bit lame. So I was like, <laughs> mommy, you should do it, you should do it. Mom is not a fast knitter. Takes. Or, no, it's just, it's objectively <laughs> true. So you, that was your favorite part? Yeah, and really? obviously, well, there was what there was. A, there was. Fun. It seemed traumatic there to you. There was fun, but I was very proud. <laughs> was very proud listening to you on the panel. I thought you spoke really well. Thanks, you Claire. You do speak often very quickly, so I was really happy that. Well, I had to speak slowly because otherwise I, I wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, no. I had to, because I was just trying to make sure that what I was saying made sense. No, <laughs> Sometimes when I talk too fast, my brain can't catch up. You were and clear, then you were to the it point. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I think the other lovely thing was, you know, just meeting some of the, some of your Instagram, Dad. some of your fans. <laughs> yeah. No, we met some followers, which was really nice. That's so nice. Um, some people who I knew were coming, some people who I, I didn't know and who said that they followed me which was really nice and obviously lots of yarn do a quick haul for day one so two purchases today there will be more tomorrow i just was a bit overwhelmed so these are the two yarn purchases i made today i made them independently of each other but they actually look so good together i might have to use them together so we'll see the first is from obsession yarns so you can see it's just like genuinely stunning uh, it's in the shade Silver Sword. Obsession Yarns is a hand-dyed yarn company dyed by Marie in Canberra. And it was my first time meeting her. She's so lovely. And I really wanted to get some of her yarn, but I didn't expect that I would get a solid color because she does have some really beautiful variegated colors, but I just couldn't stop looking at this one. And then I got, I was in love with the store from Skip Rope Yarn Co. I actually can't remember where she's based. So she's in Newcastle. So not a Canberra dyer, but another dyer that I had not yet been able to purchase from. Um, well, I'd never seen her stores before because she's from Newcastle. So she's lovely and her yarn was beautiful. It was actually so hard for me to choose. I was staring at and like deciding between so many colors, but I just, I love this one, I thought it was so pretty. It's called Purple Ponytail, which is a really cute name. And yeah, I just think they look so good together. So we might have to do something with both of these. I don't know, or maybe I'll do, I'll do like a pair of each. And then if I have enough left over, I can do something else with that. Um, I don't know, maybe not, but we'll see. I just, I think they look really, really nice together. And now I can't stop thinking about how that I need to use them together, but for what, I'm not sure. So we'll see. But yeah, that's my yarn purchases. And then I bought a project bag from Eleventy One Windmills, which is such a fun name. She had some beautiful, beautiful project bags. And I really love the cactus print and the pink. And I like how it has her little tag sewn on. She had some really cool notions and stitch markers and 
really cool things. And then I bought these for mum because she's still a very novice knitter, which is fine. But when she was knitting up a version, a modified version of my Somewhere Over the Raglan jumper, she was very much struggling to remember the difference between the M1R and the M1L, so the make one right, make one left increases. She just couldn't remember which one was which, and every single time she got to an increase round, she would come up to me and say, which one did I do it right? Did I do it right? So these stitch markers, they're basically, they're from, I bought them from the Fancy Yarns store, but they're from Artfully Twisted by Red Hill Fiber, and they're called Sweater Helpers, and they're like little wooden stitch markers. Ooh. And they have, like on the sweaters, um, it shows, but like it says, this one says M M1L pick up F to B, K back. So pick up from front to back and then knit through the back loop. So yeah, you can see it says it. And it's got like all the different ones for M1L, M1R. So it's got two of each of those. And then it's got the beginning of the round one. It's got two that say SSK and two that say K2 together. So I hope mum might get some use out of these if she ever takes on another Raglan project. And if not, I will use them because I think they're so cute. That's all for day one. Got the community dinner now. my room quickly because I don't know what happened but my needle just like broke I don't know what I genuinely don't know what happened and it's not an interchangeable it's literally just broken like mid project so annoying so I've come back to my room so I can switch projects for what I'm working on tonight because I, know, I feel weird, <laughs> weird when I'm not knitting when everyone else is but yeah so sad but um I'm gonna see if I can get another pair of two millimeter needles tomorrow. But yeah, so I'm gonna have to pick up the other project. Good thing it's, where is it? Here, right here, ready to go. Day two, the check. What are you wearing, mum? I am wearing good practice. the Monday sweater mm -hmm. uh, made by, designed by Petite Knits. Yes, good and job. And I'm wearing Stay Away to Heaven vest. Got my new project bag, so good for carrying around. My turret again for my book patterns. And yeah, we're ready, day two. Let's do it. I think we came to a head as an industry and went, hang on a second, we actually need to really look at what we're doing and we need to, we have amazing fiber arts industry here in Australia. We need to bring it back and we need to promote that we can do this and that we do understand the practices. Otherwise, we're going to fall behind with the rest of the world. The rest of the world are already doing the non molding They're already looking at the way that they're... We use social media really positively to engage a community of people who obviously love everything that you've been creating and love your designs, but then you took that a bit further and actually invited them to connect. Can you talk to us a little bit more about that um, Instagram group that you created and um, how you've used social media for good to connect younger generations and inspire them with young craft? I feel like so many aspects of knitting these days, or in the way that I engage with it comes down to social media, not just my business and that's how I promote it, but, but just so many other things. I've made so many friends through social media um, all over the world, some that I've met when I've gone and travelled, um, some that happen to live five minutes away from me that I never would have known and now you know, some, one of my best friends I met through Instagram. It's like crazy to me. In terms of our knitting group, uh, it was maybe two years ago, I had one of my pattern testers who lived in Melbourne and reached out to me and said, my friend and I were trying to organize, we're trying to start a knitting group in Melbourne, but 
we don't have many followers and we haven't seemed to be able to get any interest from it. And I said, no, 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 I have definitely have people from Melbourne following me. I know that for a fact. I'll put on my Instagram story, see if anyone's interested in joining a group. So that was just, it was just to help um, this girl out and to try and get a few more people. And it's in the past two years, it's now grown. Now the group chat has over 100 people. Our Facebook group has over 2,000 people, which we do not know how that happened, but it's, it's happened. So there's obviously lots of interest in it. And we do monthly meetups where we go to pubs or parks and it's really it's we've met so many of us have made friends through through that and it's been just such an incredible way to connect and that group chat is active every single day people are talking about anything and everything um it's just yeah it's such a beautiful community and um, it would have never happened if it wasn't for uh, for social media the most passionate people about blocking are the ones who used to not do it like that's we've, we've seen the we've been on both sides of the of the spectrum when it comes to that i feel like there is a bit of a lack in explanation and especially online it's like yeah blocking and there's not a lot of explanation as to what it actually is um but ever since i started blocking my nips i, I can't I just can't go back um but basically i prefer to use a wet blocking technique just because if you're going to be washing your garments which you should do um especially after you've been working on it i had someone point out like your project has been everywhere. It's been in your bag, on the floor, on your bed, on your desk, and it's, you know, your hands have been on it. Like, you should ideally be washing it before you wear it, even if you think, oh, it's clean, it hasn't even been worn yet. It's still not necessarily clean. Um, so if you're going to plan on washing it anyway, then I find wet blocking is just a good way to, to get that you know, process out of the way um, from the start so that you don't wear something for a while and then all of a sudden you're like, I want to wash it. And you're like, wow, it fits so differently now. But what really changed blocking for me and made it like so much more fun is I got the Nip Pro Nip Blockers, which are like these pins that like they have a whole lot of pins in, in one rather than having to pin each like, bit individually and you have it when it like starts to look like little semicircles all along the edge of your nip. It's just a really good way to get it perfectly straight. I probably use them way too many, way more than is necessary, but it's just fun and they're they're rainbow and it comes in with a set. And yeah, you can just really shape the garment to fit or to be the size that you want it to be. If you're doing lace work, it'll really open up the stitches, which is really important um, for, for you to be actually able to be able to see the, the design. Um, and it just will drape so much nicer and fits so much nicer. Um, and yeah, I just couldn't recommend it enough. And also your stitches will look so much neater after the fact. Any stitches that might like have a bit of funny tension or just look a bit crumply, they'll just even out afterwards. So, um, and then you just wait for it to dry and then you put it on and it's, it's great. I've seen a remarkable difference in my knits since I started blocking. Uh, and <laughs> don't know why I wasn't doing it earlier. <laughs> back home it is Monday morning and I am quite tired so just bear with me as I get through this but I really wanted to start editing this video so I thought I should 
wrap up the video and I'm gonna do a quick little haul because I did buy a bunch of things yesterday but obviously I didn't get a chance to show you those things because we had to check out of our room yesterday so didn't really get any time to like go back to the room in the afternoon to do a quick haul so yeah it was also a really busy day I had both my panels in the afternoon and then we basically just like went straight to the airport so didn't get the chance to do this but but I'll do it for you now. I bought some more yarn yesterday. <laughs> so this yarn that I got is from, I just want to make sure I get the name right, Joka Mamo, Joka Mamo Textiles. I ended up getting both of these. Um, I got this beautiful sock yarn in the colorway Raspberry Sherbet. And it reminded me a little bit of um, the Woolen Works Gloria colorway it's a bit more red than that one but i really really loved it and i was so sad that i didn't get gloria so this is like the closest thing and i think it'll make a really beautiful pair of socks i feel like the light is like a little bit overexposed right now let me just try and fix that yeah okay that should be better so now you can see the colorway a little bit better and you can really get those details because it's just so gorgeous, the speckles. I'm obsessed, so I think it'll be a really cute pair of socks. But then I came back to the store and I was like, they had these really cute mini skeins. I've never bought a mini skein before. So I ended up getting this golden poppy colorway. And I just thought that that would be good. And I can use this for the toe and the heel, like a little contrast color moment. And then I went back to the Skip Rope Yarn Co. stall because I just couldn't resist and I saw this really beautiful limited edition color so that made me kind of freak out and so I ended up getting two just because I was like what if I want to do something that isn't socks with it and I don't think one would be enough so if it's limited edition I feel like I just have to get two so yeah it's called Sunday Sessions and it's so beautiful it's showing up quite pink I feel like on camera but it's very purple in real life, so I don't really know. It's a little bit lighter on camera, I think, than in real life. It's this, like just very vibrant, but like probably darker than what I normally go for. Once again, sock yarn. I don't know, I just like using sock yarn even for not sock projects. So I'm gonna do something fun with these, not sure what, but very excited. That's all the yarn that I bought. And then I ended up getting a new pair of two millimeter needles. I haven't actually opened them yet because I had another project to work on yesterday and I'd already packed away my sock project that I was working on because the needles broke and we had to pack our bags obviously. So I didn't get to put these on my project so I haven't actually tried them out yet but I've used Seenit needles before so I know that I that I like them. Um, but yeah, I got the Seenit Shirotake, Shirotake, 60 centimeter, Cord. I'm really sad that the clovers broke, honestly. I was a really big fan of those needles, so I'm not sure if it's just because they're really small or I don't even know. I don't even know how it happened. I just looked down at my needles and all of a sudden it was broken, so not much I can really say about that. But the scene it's also really, really nice to work with and there was a beautiful stall. I can't remember the name of the stall actually that was selling these, but it was a really beautiful stall. I think it was a Canberra local stall. And yeah, they were selling these, so I bought them, so now we good to go and continue on those socks because I was getting so close to the end and I was like no like <laughs> you can't do this to me so there's that and then I also got my first ever I know it's crazy but my first ever pair of needle toppers <laughs> I don't know why I've never bought these before I see them at every single market I've just always felt like I don't need them for some reason but I was like you know what I actually probably could do with a set these were only four dollars and they're from handmade by Katkin and she was on one of the panels with me and she's super lovely so I thought I'll support her stall and get a cute little pair of these little hearts I thought they were really really cute and yeah we'll just give them a go and if I am like wow I don't know how I've been able to live without these then I will definitely be getting more needle toppers whenever I get a chance. So that's everything I bought. I'll try and get like another shot when the lighting is a little bit better of everything laid out. But I also wanted to quickly show you what was in the show bag and also our little gift bag that we got at the community dinner on Saturday night because I don't think I've shown you. All right, so I'm actually not gonna show you everything that's in this, but I will show you some of the main highlights. Uh, so I'll firstly show you the tote bag. So it's super cute. It says Australian Yarn Show, and then I love this little slogan. It says, um, I'm on a strict yarn diet. My doctor has recommended plenty of fiber. <laughs> so cute. I'm not gonna show you, like I said, all of what's in it because there are so many discount codes and little coupons and stuff for 
pretty much every single store holder that was in there. I also was meant to have bookmarks in all of the show bags. Unfortunately, they didn't end up in all of them because there was a bit of a miscommunication between the organizers and myself and I didn't get enough of them printed. So unfortunately, my show bag didn't come with one, which is honestly fine. I'm happy that it would rather go into someone else. But yeah, it was a really cute little bookmark with my book cover and the name of the book and a QR code to pre-order. So unfortunately, I can't show you that, but it, it was it was in the show bags for those who received one. But yeah, I'm just going to show you the main things that aside from all the discount codes. So got this yarn, which I think is from Fancy Yarn. It's the recycled cotton brand is We Love Yarn, but I'm pretty sure it's stocked by Fancy Yarns and they are the ones who provided this. So it's beautiful. Yeah, recycled, 100% recycled cotton. It's really lovely. I love the color, um, but I'm just, I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for. So we shall see. Then we've got a Australian Yarn Show notebook, which says from Felices to Thesis, <laughs> which I think is great. I didn't actually use this while at the event. I saw a lot of people using it to take notes in the panels, but I was too busy knitting to do that. But I think I'm going to use this as my new design book, notebook, journal thing. Also comes with a little pen that says the Australian Yarn Show on it. So very, very cute. Okay, and the main other uh, little gift that was in the show bag is this, which I'm so excited I have, but I honestly, I wish I had a new about this earlier because this would have been such a cool thing to take with me on my various trips that I've been on over the past few years where I've been going to so many different yarn stores around the world. So I might have to go and like retroactively fill this out, but this is the yarn store passport from Dear Prue. Um, and I, I love it so much. It is so, so cute. And you could actually, I didn't really think to even do it while I was there because I think I was just stressed about like the fact that I hadn't like started it yet, but they actually had stamps at all the different stalls. So you could get your yarn store passport stamped. So it's a bit of a shame that I, um, I didn't do that, but that's okay. But yeah, it's got like, I'm gonna like put pins on all the places in the world that I've been to yarn stores at and there's like a little bingo and like a DIY yarn crawl and what else like all sorts of things and then basically the whole way through they have like this little thing so you can basically put your yarn store name and then like where it is and then you could get like a stamp or a sticker here so I don't know, I might have to go back and look at some of my receipts and I don't know, I'm gonna have to figure that out. But uh, yeah, I might I might just go back and fill this in because I've been to so many yarn stores around the world and around the country that I feel like this is literally perfect for me and I can't believe I didn't have it or know about this before, but I'm so happy it was included in the show bag because now I have one. So yeah, looking forward to going and filling this in. <laughs> and then also in the future, obviously, I'll get to use this throughout my future yarn store adventures. That's everything I want to show you from the show bag, but then we also have this little gift bag that we got from the community dinner the other night. And this one says, um, Australian Yarn Show, I'm always down for a good yarn. Love that. And this is like a little pencil case. So that's really great. I love a good pencil case. It's always good to have. And all right, so. This one came, everyone got a different color, so I, might, I may or may not have traded with someone else to get the color I wanted. It's actually quite similar to this one, but maybe just a little bit darker, not as saturated. Um, but this is really cool. This is also provided by Fancy Yarns, but it's from Queensland Collection, so it's Australian. It's called Myrtle, and it's sustainable and compostable vegan silk spun from eucalyptus. So I have never used anything like this before. I've never used eucalyptus vegan silk yarn so i'm very intrigued and i'm interested to see how this knits up and what i can do with it once again so i actually ended up getting two of these stitch markers because i got one of the like questions right or something we were doing all these like little activities and icebreakers and stuff so i ended up getting a second one but yeah we've got these little gorgeous like little skein stitch markers from 111 windmills and she actually had i'm so upset she had these as earrings and i didn't buy them on the first day and then i was like really hoping she'd still have them on the second day but of course she sold out so i didn't end up getting but i told her i'm definitely gonna order from her so i can get a pair because i don't have any yarn or knitting related earrings and that just feels like a crime so i'm gonna fix that so that was everything that was in here so that's my that's my haul i guess or everything that i acquired over the weekend i'm gonna give my brief 
thoughts and feels. Obviously I did do a little bit of a summary yesterday, but yeah, I guess I just wanted to wrap this up by saying I had the most incredible weekend. My cup is full. I feel just so, I don't know, just so happy. The experience was incredible. I got to meet so many amazing people. I'm just, yeah, I'm so, I'm so happy that I got to go. And I'm really, really looking forward to next year's event. I honestly think I've just, I've said everything so many times that like, you're probably getting bored of me saying it, but had the best, best time. And I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. I hope that you got a good kind of glimpse into what the weekend was like. I tried to film as much as I could, but I also wanted to, you know, live in the moment and enjoy the experience without having to stress about content constantly so tried to have a good balance but yeah my panels yesterday went really well and it was just it was really insightful and amazing to learn from so many people to hear from so many people if you didn't know uh my book is coming out on april 2nd that is as we t as i'm speaking today just over a week away it's currently monday when i'm filming this it's coming out on tuesday april 2nd that will be american time so it'll be a wednesday for me but i think by the time this video is up it'll be a week from when you're seeing this that my book will be released in america and canada make sure to pre-order it if you haven't or you can just wait till a, a week from now and buy it once it's out and it'll come straight to your door or you can see if it's available at your local bookstore or Barnes and noble whatever it is and you can get it there so that's crazy if you're not already following me on instagram and tiktok make sure you do that if you like this video like this video and subscribe if you're not already I'm really hoping we can get to 5,000 subscribers soon because i like multiples of five i find it satisfying so subscribe if you're not already I make content about knitting and yarn and fiber arts and all the things so yeah if you want to support me on patreon the link is in the description you can get early access to these videos I do a monthly podcast I'm going to be talking about this weekend in more depth on the patreon podcast so you can hear more about my experience in like just more detail I guess and kind of what I learned from it and my takeaways etc there are two tiers at the moment the garter stitch girlies and the cable cuties the cable cuties get a shout out in every one of my YouTube videos so thank you so much to my cable cuties patrons your support means the absolute well to me but yeah if you wanted to get exclusive content and pattern discount codes discord access early access to these videos etc make sure to check me out on patreon and yeah okay I think that's everything thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one when my book is most likely out. Crazy. Okay, bye.